What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, pilots of all ages, Joker back again, once again, and what kind of YouTuber would I be if I didn't take a moment to dance on Anthem's desiccated corpse? I mean, grave. Great, yeah. Anyways, Anthem, everybody's favorite cautionary tale, a game that had nothing but hype leading up to it, because on paper, it should have been good. It's not even like Anthem was outside of Bioware's wheelhouse. This is the studio, after all, with a pedigree of generally highly reviewed franchises like Baldur's Gate, Knights of the Old Republic, Dragon Age, Mass Effect. All highly reviewed and highly revered RPG franchises, along with creating an MMO, Knights of the Old Republic. Hell, all Bioware really needed to do was take the core concepts of games like Mass Effect and Dragon Age, combine that with Anthem's gameplay, world, and lore, and add co-op and some Destiny-like endgame content. And they would have had a strong franchise. But as we know from Jason Schreier's reporting, Anthem lacked any creative direction during its development, with leads on the game afraid to take charge and make choices and Anthem proving quite definitively, after the atrocity that was Mass Effect Andromeda, that the Bioware of old is no more. That that Bioware magic is long gone. And all of this is really sad when you think about it, because I don't think there was anyone who didn't want Anthem to succeed. The looter shooter genre has spent half a decade dominated by Destiny. Even Borderlands, arguably the franchise that started it all, has failed to make headway against Destiny with Borderlands 3 being more of the same, if not lesser, than its predecessors in a lot of aspects, and nowhere near a true evolution of the franchise or the genre. With Bioware's pedigree, Anthem could have been easily a real threat to Destiny, something that the stagnating monolith desperately needs. Because let's be real, let's be honest, we can bitch and moan about how any franchise needs to change, and that'll work to an extent. It's certainly far more effective than boycotting ever will be. But, at the end of the day, the true breeder of innovation is and will always be competition. So Anthem being good would have been good for everyone. Hell, I certainly miss playing as this bladed ballerina of death because it was a really cool and unique experience. But we're not here to lament all of Anthem's release day failures. Just all the other ones. And ask the question, is it too little, too late? for Anthem 2.0. After release, Anthem had a roadmap not unlike Destiny. There was events, there was DLC, and then for some reason, Bioware decided to scrap most everything. I say scrapped, but that really doesn't make a lot of sense. Because why would you scrap DLC events and updates you'd already been working on and have in some state of development? People do things differently, I understand, but one of Destiny 1 and 2's strengths was new DLC that gave people a reason to come back and see what had changed, for better or for worse. Supporting the game while fixing the game might not be ideal for developers, but it does keep the game alive, and at least somewhat on the periphery of people's interest. However, the way Anthem is now, all you ever hear is bad news or no news. Or news that's dressed up to sound like good news, but is actually just no news, like the most recent news that Bioware is working on fixing Anthem. Gasp. Shock. I think we all kind of assumed that they were working on it for the last year, at least trying to salvage something that hundreds of millions of dollars of development money went into over the course of the last decade. My speculation is that anything that Bioware was working on for that roadmap was in early stages of production, and never would have seen any of those projected release dates anyways, because as I stated, why would you scrap DLC and events and updates that you were already working on? I mean, even if it was to put all the resources in to save the game, wouldn't you want those DLC and events and updates to go out anyways, if for no other reason than to buffer the game from the time of release to whenever you can actually save said game. I mean, look at Destiny 1 with Dark Below, House of Wolves all leading up to Taken King, or Destiny 2 with Curse of Osiris and Warmine working up to Forsaken. Now, I know the game had things like Cataclysms come out, but we were told about Cataclysms at the initial E3 that Anthem was announced. So that's content that should have been finished and in the game upon release, not released months later, after the fact. The unfinished state of Anthem at release, and how long it took Cataclysm, something that was supposed to be a core feature of the endgame, to release, leads me to believe that the roadmap was nothing more than a pipe dream. It was never really an actual set of goals 
that Bioware would be able to deliver on in a reasonable timeline, and we've seen that happen. The roadmap went from delayed to non-existent, and Bioware has spent the better part of a year not really saying anything. But now Bioware is working on Anthem 2.0 or Anthem Next, which is hopefully more live-action trailer than what we got at release. Because, let me tell you, that live-action trailer is still pretty fucking cool. This Anthem overhaul, this Anthem 2.0 or Anthem Next, was originally leaked and reported back in November of 2019 on Kotaku by Jason Schreier. And at that time, Jason writes, They're still figuring out whether the update should be released all at once or over an extended period of time. Anthem could be overhauled through a series of updates, a la No Man's Sky. It could get a game-changing expansion like Destiny's critically acclaimed Taken King. And from a Bioware blog post, Casey Hudson writes, Over the coming months, we'll be focusing on a long-term redesign of the experience. Specifically, working to reinvent the core gameplay loop with clear goals, motivating challenges and progression with meaningful rewards while preserving the fun of flying and fighting in a vast science fantasy setting. And to do that properly, we'll be doing something we would have liked to have done more on the first time around, giving a focused team time to test and iterate, focusing on gameplay first. So it seems like they're going for more Taken King, or what would be more accurate given the scope and scale of these changes, a Destiny 2 Forsaken style revamp. Which of course inevitably leads us to one question and one question alone. If it's a Taken King style or Forsaken style revamp, assumably with some sort of new game, DLC, story-like content, what is this going to cost players? Or people like myself who bought Anthem and was burnt by its initial release, and have only ever periodically returned to check out the newest update. We know back in September of 2018 at PAX West, Bioware announced that all of its story DLC would be free. This of course was under the naive assumption that the game wouldn't tank and would have cash shop support throughout the development of the DLC and the game's lifespan. And let's be real, let's be honest, as much as Casey Hudson wants to downplay Anthem's colossal failure by stating, creating new worlds is central to our studio's mission, but it's not easy. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we miss. Miss is an understatement when the reality is that an unfocused, unorganized studio shipped an unfinished game, clearly still in need of a year and then some in development. Anthem wasn't a miss. Anthem was an unmitigated shitshow. It's a joke within the Destiny community, and I'm sure within most of these games-as-a-service communities, that it often feels like we are the QA testers or the beta testers. And I think that sentiment is far more accurate with Anthem than any other game. And a lot of people paid $60 for what is essentially an unfinished, broken disaster of a game. Creating new worlds might be Bioware's mission, but our money is not their consolation prize when it all goes wrong. And with Anthem, Bioware's goodwill has run dry. They can't charge for this reboot, this retool, this remake, this Anthem 2.0, this Anthem Next. They already got their money. That might sound entitled to some, but no more entitled than a studio knowingly releasing a broken game and expecting people to pay for it. Or worse, pay for it to be fixed. People often want to talk about the player's entitlement, but never about the publisher or the developer's entitlement. I really do think that Anthem can make a comeback. Hell, I want it to make a comeback. The world is interesting, the mechanics are interesting, the concept is interesting. I'll point back to the live-action trailer. That was really interesting. But after its initial release, after essentially tricking hundreds of thousands if not millions of people into buying a broken, unfinished game, EA and Bioware essentially have to take the L on this extended development cycle for Anthem to get people back into the game. If they don't, if they try to make people pay for this, call it player entitlement all you want, but Anthem will truly be dead. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe. Feel free to toss a coin to your Joker over on my Patreon. You know, if you're feeling generous. But above all else, stay frosty.